Hey guys, what is up? And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a 4K 32 inch HDR 10 bit capable monitor that seems to check pretty much all of the boxes for a solid do it all monitor. But the question is, is it really worth it? Make sure to stick around to find out and let's get straight into the video. Now I want to kick off this review by taking a look at the design of the BenQ EW3270U and then we'll go ahead and move on to the panel itself, which is really what I'm sure you guys are waiting for and then I'll just conclude my thoughts at the end. So starting off with the first impressions of the design of this monitor and right off the bat, it's a really simple looking monitor. It's got somewhat large bezels that extend outwards and at the bottom we have a large grey bezel with the BenQ logo right in the center. Now something you guys might have noticed is this little thing sitting right below it, and BenQ calls this their Brightness Intelligence Plus technology, but long name aside, this sensor basically measures the lighting in the room and it can adjust the color temperature and brightness to match it, which helps tremendously to relieve eye strain, and it's especially useful for those of you that like to work late at night when your eyes might be strained by your computer. Now taking a look back at the bottom bezel on the right, we have an HDR icon, and like I mentioned, yes, this does actually support 10-bit HDR, and which I'll talk more about in a second, um, but right below that, there's a button to toggle it on or off. On the underside, we also have all of the buttons to navigate the menus, and of course the power button as well. Now, taking a quick look around the menus, you can see there's quite a few settings here you can change with a bunch of picture modes that can be customized. Right out of the box, I wasn't completely satisfied with the image, so you will have to play with it a bit to get it to look exactly how you want it. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to do though with individual picture adjustments for things like brightness, contrast, sharpness, gamma, saturation, etc. Um, although, in order to change all of them, you will have to switch the picture mode to the user preset under picture modes, and then you can have full control of all of that stuff. One really nice feature hidden away in the settings is that under system you can actually set up custom keys for quick access to whichever settings in the menu you find you use a lot and that's just overall super convenient to have. Moving on, on the back of the monitor you also have access to a vase mount so that is an option for mounting and of course we also have all of the ports including two HDMI ports, a display port 1.4 and of course a headphone jack. It also has USB Type-C, which is nice to see for those of you with like a newer MacBook Pro, for example. But just keep in mind that this does not actually transfer power like some Type-C monitors, so you will have to rely on your laptop's power adapter when it's plugged into the monitor. The included stand is also pretty decent, and the only reason I say decent is because it has adjustments for angle, but unfortunately you're not gonna find any kind of height adjustment here, which was honestly a bit disappointing. Another slight disappointment is the built-in speakers, which are decent, but they definitely could be a lot better. And just buying a cheap pair of $20 speakers from Amazon would give you better results, but I don't think you guys probably care too much about the quality of those speakers when most people just use a pair of external speakers anyway. Now with all of that covered, the most important thing of any monitor is obviously the panel. And here we have a full 32 inch 4K VA panel with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. Like most 4K monitors, this features a refresh rate of 60 Hertz, which basically just means that it's only capable of displaying up to 60 frames per second, which should honestly be perfectly fine for everyone. And even if you do plan to game at 4K at higher frame rates, it's very unlikely that your graphics card would be able to handle anything above 60 frames per second. Now being a 32 inch monitor, this was the very first thing I noticed right out of the box and it's fantastic because it gives you a ton of screen space to work. Plus with four times the total resolution of 1080p, I can easily have a full 1080p video playing in a corner and still have three quarters of the entire screen left in screen space when I'm video editing. Now, I'm sure some of you guys are probably wondering if this is too big, and for any of you considering that, I will say that at first it seemed really large, but as I continued to use it, I got used to having all of that extra screen space, and when I eventually tried going back to another 25-inch monitor, I really just couldn't do it, just because it felt so cramped, so having that extra size is absolutely amazing if you're a content creator like myself. 
On top of that, BenQ states that it has an impressive 95% rated coverage of the DCI-P3 color space, 100% coverage of the sRGB color space, plus one of its main selling points is that 10-bit color. And what that basically means is that it allows it to display a much wider range of colors and shades, which is really important if you're working with video or you're editing a lot of photos and just want to get the most out of the color. When you take into account everything I just mentioned, you put that all together, you have a really solid monitor for content creators. Now for those of you interested in gaming, it also has some nice features including a nice 4 millisecond response time, and it comes with support for FreeSync. Now when it comes to high dynamic range or HDR, just having it as an option is really nice because put simply, it just makes the images pop a lot more and they just look a whole lot more lifelike because it greatly improves the contrast and color in HDR supported content, like Far Cry 5 for example I have here. It is a bit difficult to explain the difference without seeing it for yourself, but upon toggling on HDR you will be really surprised by the difference. There's not too much HDR content available right now, like I mentioned some games like Far Cry 5 are available with support for it, and there is also some YouTube content and movies that support it. This monitor does have a built-in HDR emulation feature which will try to emulate the look of HDR, but in most cases I find it just makes the image look a bit unnatural and I prefer to leave it off. A couple of things I would like to mention, um, first it would be nice if the monitor could get a bit brighter with it maxing out at 300 nits, and the second thing is once HDR is turned on you can't really customize anything about it at all. Now this is a VA panel, and like all monitor technologies out there including TN and IPS it has both its advantages and disadvantages which are worth mentioning. First off, it has an excellent 3000 to 1 native contrast ratio which makes the blacks on this monitor super deep and it makes highlights really pop and stand out and overall just makes everything pop. Um, and all of that with the HDR and 4K means that content is absolutely stunning on here. Plus, that contrast ratio is also much better than what you'd find on even the more pricier IPS panels out there. On the flip side though, being VA means that viewing angles aren't as good as IPS monitors, but BingQ does state that this monitor is capable of 178 degree viewing angles, and for me it's been fine since I mostly view stuff straight on. One thing I would like to mention is in my experience, I did notice some color shifting at angles and in the corners, and this was even more noticeable in the corners when I was looking at a single flat colored image, mainly due to the monitor's large size. Also, I wanted to mention that I didn't personally notice any ghosting when gaming on or just using the monitor. And that pretty much covers everything I wanted to share with you guys. Um, that's basically it. And overall, I just really enjoyed using this monitor. Of course, like all monitors out there, it's not going to be perfect for everything. For example, viewing angles aren't bad, but they could be a bit better. And there was some color shifting that was noticeable in very specific cases, but like most flaws I pointed out in this video, they don't really affect the actual experience of using it in any real life situations when you're not looking for it. I would also say for most people out there, except for the most competitive gamers, 60Hz at 4K is going to be fine for most people. So overall, if you're just looking for a very solid all-around monitor for watching content, creating content, and even doing a bit of gaming, then this is really a fantastic choice. Plus, when you take into account all of its features, it has like a full 4K resolution on a large VA panel, HDR 10-bit support, um, its color accuracy, free sync support, and when you compare it with similarly specced out monitors, it's actually a very good value which makes it easy to recommend to you guys. But anyway guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Before I go though, I have to give a massive thank you to BingQ for sending out this monitor for reviews. So without BingQ, we couldn't have done this review, so huge thank you to BingQ for that. Um, but yeah, like all reviews on this channel though, this video was not at all sponsored. All the opinions in this video were of course my own. But with that being said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.